former University of Alabama football player Mac Hereford, who we were trying to get on the show back during uh, football season, but because of uh, the fact that he was playing for the University of Alabama and media restrictions, as we talk about all the time, are so stiff that we couldn't uh, couldn't get him on. But now that he is done playing at Alabama, graduated in December, he is free to join us and talk about whatever we want to talk about. Good morning, Mac. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Thank you for having me on. Man, excited to have you on. Uh, I'm going to get into kind of uh, uh, some things that you've done media-wise uh, for AL.com, and, and you've been a guy that uh, has have been active on social media. But let's just start with where you're at right now. As I said, you played uh, four years at Alabama, 2016, 17, 18, and 19. You graduated in December. Uh, you were a preferred walk-on coming in here to Alabama and uh, got to play some, got honored at senior day, had a great experience, but you still got uh, a year of eligibility remaining. Uh, What are your plans? Are you going to try to, as a graduate transfer, go play maybe at a school where you can get on the field more than you did at UA, or are you done with football? What are are, are your plans right now? Well, uh, you know, like you said, I graduated in December, and then uh, I'm looking forward to playing my final season, uh, fifth year of eligibility somewhere else. Uh, You know, I had an unbelievable experience at Alabama and got to, you know, pick up a lot of cool um, insight and just, you know, wisdom from Coach Saban and and all these other coaches, and I want to take that somewhere else and get to help out another program. I don't really officially know where I'm going to go yet, but – Looking forward to that next step. It's been a little hectic with uh, things going on right now, but mm-hmm. you know, I'm looking forward to that next step in my life. Yeah, it's certainly crazy right now. Have you uh, have you entered the portal officially, Mac? I have. Uh, I, I did that. I think pretty soon after graduating. Um, you know, I went up to the the football facility and did all the papers and entered the portal then. Well, good deal. Well, we'll look forward to following uh, your career. A- as a receiver, uh, you came in here, and I, I want to get into the decision to-, to come to Alabama because you're from Birmingham. You went to uh, Woodbury Forest up in Virginia, a very prominent uh, boarding school, and, and we're going to get into the athletics there, great athletics there. But you had opportunities, uh, I'm sure, to have gone to a smaller school, maybe on scholarship or into a situation where you could have probably played more football on the field, but you chose to go ahead and and, and attend the University of Alabama as a preferred walk-on with one of the most loaded rosters in in college football. What went into that decision to bypass maybe playing somewhere where you could have got on the field more to live out your dream and play at Alabama? Yeah, so I I mean, the the first thing first, when I grew up in my – my family, you know, my mom and her side of the family are the biggest Bama fans uh, ever. And I grew up bleeding crimson. And, you know, I, I went to, I think, almost, I think I went to four or five Nick Saban camps, maybe more. Okay. Um, and, and just grew up loving Alabama football, you know, what it stood for, uh, the impact the, the program made on the state and the university. Um, and, and just always wanted to go there. I saw something so special and I wanted to be a part of that. And, you know, so then growing up, I kept my eyes on that. I said, that's where I want to be. And then, you know, when it became more of a reality uh, in my high school years, you know, I, I looked at it as, what do I want to do in life? You know, like I want to be the best person I can be. I want to be the best player I can be. Uh, and so from a position standpoint, wide receiver, um, you know, I wanted to be the best wide receiver I could be. And if you're going to try to be that, you want to go to the best place possible um, to make that happen. And for the, for me, that was Alabama. Um, just seemed like everything was, was right with that. And I didn't care about, you know, the competition or, you know, other situations or how much I'd play. It was just about, you know, this is where I'll improve the most. This is where I'll get the best coaching and be with the best players in the country and, you know, get the experience of a lifetime um, that I dreamed of doing. So it was about accomplishing my dreams and really just becoming the best football player I can be. That's awesome. And in, Four years there, uh, an amazing record Alabama put together, 2016. uh, Lost the heartbreaking national championship game to Clemson down in Tampa. Came back and and won it in 2017 when Tua came off the bench to beat Georgia. Uh, Lost the national championship game in 2018 to Clemson out in uh, California. And, of course, this year failed to make the playoff for the first time uh, since the playoff's been in existence. Uh, That experience, uh, being a part of of the greatest program in college football, playing for Nick Saban, uh, working out every day and practicing with with the receivers that you got an opportunity to play with and compete against Uh, and there are a lot of Alabama football fans I'm sure that are just curious to know 
what's what's that like? I mean, what what is it like to play football at the University of Alabama, knowing that the goal every year is a national championship and play for arguably the greatest coach in the history of the sport? It's a it's a pretty awesome thing, uh, to say the least. Um, you know, getting to play with guys who not only are athletically, you know, the best talent you can you can find out there. These guys also are just a lot of them are just great people and great guys, and a lot of people don't get to see that from you know the outside. They might look at it, you know a Jerry Judy or a Ruggs is a just a freak athlete, a great football player. But these guys are awesome to hang around and you know fun people to be around as well. And you know there's something special about just working so hard uh, alongside a bunch of guys. It's one of the things about the sport of football that's so enjoyable is just you're fighting to get to the same goal or reward. Um, and you know, it's, it's a business and you get to learn so many special things about how a great system operates when you're fighting to be the best every single year. It's, it's pretty awesome. What's it like, uh, at, at a position that is as loaded as Alabama has been since you played there with, with some of the best wide receivers in the country, your preferred walk on, which means, you know, you were invited to come in uh, by the coaches and be a part of the program and be on the roster. But every day you're competing against the best and heck man, you want to play too. Uh, you know, what, what, what's, what, what is, what is that like? Uh, you know, I know it makes you better as a football player, but how daunting is that task every day when you look up and you got Judy and you got Smith and you got rugs and, and you got Waddle. And, and before that you got Ridley I mean what in the heck is that like for a guy that's saying to himself man I want to get on the field too but look at what I'm up against yeah no it's it's a it you know it's a it's a they're big time players uh but you know you just got to come into it with the right attitude I I just thought every day like how much of a blessing it was to be able to get to play beside guys like that Mm -hmm. uh who have that talent and that work ethic and you know know the game so well um and I looked at it more of less of a competition and more of just you know okay, I want to get on the field, how do I do that? And, and I would, you know, learn from these guys. I would, I would see what makes Judy this good, what makes Calvin this good, what are they doing to become better? And I would try to, you know, mimic the things they do uh, They do in drills or, you know, on the field and, and really got a great chance to learn. And it's just like, it's, it's pretty special, like you're saying, when you have all these guys who are just these top receivers you're getting to analyze some of the best players in college football just right here in front of you uh, every single day. And so it was just fun going out to practice knowing that, you know, yes, I'm competing uh, competing with these guys, but at the same time, like, I'm also getting to learn from them. Um, and so, you know, I would work as hard as I possibly could, but realize at the same time that these guys are the some of the best players you'll, you know, that I'll ever see play college football. Mac Hereford with us, uh, former Alabama football wide receiver, played his last season in 2019, so he is uh, very, very familiar with what's going on at UA. I want to ask you the, the million-dollar question that I get asked all the time, and it's uh, it's difficult for me to answer because I didn't do it. I know people think I have insight talking to players and so forth, but what is it really like to play for Nick Saban? I mean, we see the Nick Saban uh, that we get to see from a media standpoint, and he always says, you know, when given the opportunity, that it's you know, I do have fun. I do enjoy it. I do joke around with the players. It is different than the perception. What is it? like playing for him and what is he like uh and we know what kind of football coach he is but is there a side of him that we don't get to see that the players uh get to see and and enjoy being around him from from more of a personal aspect yeah for sure i mean he you know on one side uh, of things like what you see is what you get he is a very disciplined coach as everyone knows and he has his process and the things he wants to do and accomplish uh and he's really focused and serious about that but yeah, there was definitely times. I, I remember, like my freshman year, he cracked around with uh, uh, Garrick Dieter uh, when we were in the film room one time. Just he'll, he'll crack some jokes occasionally. We're watching film when guys maybe celebrate or something. He'll you know crack a joke on them for celebrating a certain way, and kind of the guy gets embarrassed. Uh, and you know he'll, he'll open up from time to time in practice or after practice, uh, depending on whether he's like, telling us a story or trying to motivate us. So he's definitely. You know, there's definitely a side of Coach Saban that most people don't see, um, and he does lighten up. Uh, he he jokes around with us occasionally, but for the most part, he's focused. And you know, that's just a that's one of the cool uh, things about him is that he's so focused and you know so well disciplined and and really trying to do what's right for the players. Uh, 
he really does care about every um, every individual, regardless if he gets to spend time with each and every one of us. He does care about us um, and tries to do its best for each and every one of us. And I think that's a pretty special thing to do when you're trying to manage and keep the best uh, program in the country running. I said since the playoff went into effect, I said the first time that Alabama doesn't make the playoff, there's going to be a meltdown. And, and to some degree, that was the case this year with losing at home to LSU and losing a heartbreaking Iron Bowl at, 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 uh, at Auburn. And you went to the VRB Citrus Bowl and had a great performance. But in, in four seasons, Alabama's lost five games. But yet there seems to be a feeling that maybe with just the one national championship the last four seasons that this program is underachieving. My question is, Mac, do the players feel that pressure? Do they sense uh, that the level of, of expectations at Alabama so much higher than a lot of other programs? Is that something that, uh, that you feel, or are you kind of uh, insulated from that as a football player? Or do you, are you aware of the expectations and how much pressure is on this team every year as a player? We definitely uh, are aware of it, I would say. You know, we, we stick away from media in the way that we – we're not looking at rankings or, you know, where, where they project so and so to go, um, any of that, um, just because we're so busy. But we're definitely aware. I mean, I can remember when we found out we weren't going to the playoffs. You know, people were pretty down. I mean, it was like, gosh, like we felt like we were a letdown in a way. Um, not, I, I can't speak for everybody, but for myself, I was like, you know, dang, like it's crazy to think that we made it to the, you know, VRBO Citrus Bowl. But yet, I feel like our season's over. You know what I mean? It was a, it was a little bit of disappointment. Um, and so, I definitely say that we we feel that pressure every year to be, you know, on top. And and Saban expects us to be the best team in college football. And I think that that's part of the reason that Alabama has had the success that uh, we've had. It's just because of the fact that that's the expectation to be the best, to be the standard. Um, and we definitely feel that pressure. And that pressure, you know. I don't think it's too much to handle. I think it actually really helps us out. Uh, it does stink because, you know, when we get to a game like the VRB, the VO Citrus Bowl, uh, that's an enjoyable game. I think we should be more excited. But at the same time, you know, because of the ways our, like our brain is, you know, uh, formed over the years being at Alabama, we think we should be in the playoffs every year. I think we should be the best team every year. Mac Hereford with us here uh, talking Bama football. You had a first hand look at these quarterbacks as a wide receiver you played and practiced with all of them you know in 2016 Jalen came in as a true freshman and I think people forget how he was just kind of thrown in there against USC and led that team to a, a 14 and 0 record and and two minutes away from being 15 and 0 in the national championship when he put him in the end zone against Clemson uh, to give him a late lead there before Alabama lost the game and then in 2017 uh, going through that entire season uh, unbeaten until the Iron Bowl and um, getting Alabama back into the playoff into the national championship game. But at the same time, there's this amazing talent that comes in in Tua Tagovailoa. And during mm-hmm. that 2017 season, there was a lot of discussion about, you know, should Tua be playing more? Should Tua be the quarterback? Uh, both these guys, great football players, handled it with class. But what was it like as a player and a wide receiver – watching that unfold, uh, was it ever in 2017, was it ever, and then in 2018 with Jalen as the backup, was it ever a distraction to the team? I wouldn't say it was a, ever got to the point of being a distraction just because of the fact that, you know, Coach Saban just handles media situations like that so well. And I mean, it was an internal situation as well. Like, there was a quarterback battle. Uh, but the way he handles it, I you know, it's just more of like, you know, we shouldn't be focused on these things. We should just be focused on everybody doing their job. Uh, and, and so it was never really a distraction, I would say. I, I think that the media, you know, obviously because it was a thing, was reporting on it and talking about it. But it was never a distraction. And it was so cool to be around because these guys were competing um, with so much heart. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, they're the best quarterbacks in the country. I mean, Jalen Hurts and Tua are just – two awesome guys going back and forth working and, and it wasn't that they were sour towards each other or trying to put each other down they were just trying to be the best they could be and you know that was that was special to me I, I don't think I've been in an environment where I've seen a competition of you know such high caliber and these guys be able to be so cordial and actually boost each other up and try to make each other better 
And I think it'll definitely help them in the long run. And just seeing that and experiencing that was something that so special um, and, you know, truly one of a kind opportunity to be a part of. Yeah, it's amazing how they handled it. I look back at, at you know, two in 2017, a lot of people telling him he should be playing. He has to be patient and wait. Then he comes off the bench at halftime to beat Georgia in the national championship game. Then in 2018, <laughs> Jalen, who had only lost two games in two years, loses his starting job. But, but stayed and hung in there and was the backup. And then, lo and behold, he comes off the bench in the SEC championship game to beat Georgia. I thought that was a great irony, and I think it also showed the class of both of those guys. Uh, for Tua to wait his turn and for Jalen, who had had been phenomenal success, to suddenly be a backup and embrace that role the way he did. What, what does that say about both those guys? Yeah, I mean, and, and Tua's position, Tua's has always been just a, a great leader and. Like like you said, he had to. People were telling him he should start right off the bat, and he waited his time and continued to grind. Uh, and that shows a lot about him and his work ethic. Um, and you know, proves to the people looking at him with this injury stuff that he's going to be fine and sure. he can bounce back from from anything. And then in Jalen's case, you know, it's just so awesome. I mean, you see a guy who literally has taken our team all the way to the championship game and done all this, like all of this. I mean, I cannot imagine being in his footsteps and. Uh, I mean, being in his in his feet, you know, and having that time where he had to take the back seat in the championship game and see, you know, Tua win it for us, it that was a big deal thing, and he handled it so well, uh, and I just that speaks volumes about their character. Um, and then to see Jalen just go on and be so successful at Oklahoma, just again speaks so highly of him and who he is. And I just I think it's pretty awesome to play, uh, you know, with both of those guys. Like they're that is extremely high character guys who you know work extremely hard and just really great athletes to be around yeah and and they're both going to play in the national football league and and have outstanding careers and now it's mac jones turn um you're good friends with Mac, from what I've been told, and and you watched him wait his turn, and then when Tua went down, uh, he came in and played very, very well, and uh, showed a lot of, of guts and and talent as well. And now he's going to be pushed because that's the way it is at Alabama. You bring in Bryce Young, you got Talia, uh, you got uh, Paul Tyson waiting in, in the wings too. There'll be competition, but give us some insight into Mac Jones as a player and a person, and uh, how you think he's going to do if he is the starting quarterback uh, in 2020. Yeah, I, 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 Mac is, a, is an awesome guy. I think he's, you know, he's the prime product of just a a grinder and a hard worker who has gone step by step and is now at the final, you know, step of his whole process. You know, he started off he was a little bit smaller, a little bit undersized, you know, not as highly recruited as these other guys, um, and then it just didn't shy away from the competition. Was constantly working and you know trying to be in every situation he could possibly be in to um, make himself successful uh and then you know i've been throwing him with with him every year and just getting him to see him just improve and get bigger and bigger uh and stronger and smarter and you know just handle that position so much better is really cool um and really special to see and then i you know a thing i like to bring up or a story that i'll never forget is when we were in the vrbo citrus bowl you know, Max starting quarterback, and I'm sitting there talking to Pierce Quick on the sideline. Um, and Mac takes a snap, goes back, gets just sacked so hard. Like, I, I was worried. I mean, he got drilled. Um, and I was thinking, is he going to get up? Next thing you know, I mean, Mac Jones just gets right back up. His patch, um, his little, you know, VRBO patch <laughs> is kind of coming off on his jersey. And he just grabs it, and he just rips it off and throws it on the ground and then is just looking at the sideline. And he's got this look in his eyes like nothing's going to stop him. You know, like it was like a movie to me. Um, and Pierce and I were just, you know, going crazy, just high-fiving, like this is amazing. You know, he's a, he's a man of the people, all this stuff. Um, <laughs> and he gets out there and just swings a couple more and played a great game. And, and it was just like that is kind of the epitome of who Mac Jones is to me. You know, he, he's a battler. He's He's fought all these battles, and he's he's ready to take that spot, and I think he'll be a great leader for the Tide next year. Um, and, you know, obviously I can't predict or foresee the future, but I think he should, you know, take them to a great season next year, and I think he'll do a great job. Um, so I, that's that's basically what I think about Mac. I think he's a, he's a heck of a player. Mac and Mac. All right, a couple more topics before we close it out. Um, you're, you're very active on social media, and I watched uh, – the two media days from the last couple of uh, 
<laughs> playoffs and, and you, you know, AL.com got you to do uh, uh, an interview segment for them, interviewing your teammates and so forth. You're good at it. And people listening to you right now, you're doing a really good job on this radio interview. You've got a great <laughs> personality. <appreciate> is, <laughs> is this something you would like to do in the future? I, I didn't even ask you what you got your degree in, but what'd you get your degree in? And is media something that you're interested in? Well, so I was in public relations uh, and then because I wanted to graduate early, I uh, had a transition to doing uh, a different major and got it in interdisciplinary studies. Um, but it's definitely something I'm interested in. I've, I've loved, you know, social media and just speaking um, and being on a platform is something that's always, you know, been something desirable to me because I've, I've always wanted to share my story and, you know, inspire the youth and, and younger generations uh, around me because, you know, I was a little kid who it took one person uh, it took one me hearing one story about someone, um, you know, success story to get me going and realize, you know, I can make it too. Uh, and I've always wanted that's part of one of the reasons I wanted to play at Alabama is because it would give me that platform where, you know, I could be a player and tell a little kid, you know, you can make it here someday because because they really can. Um, and for the you know media wise, yeah, it's just been something that's been kind of fun to me. I've, I've loved messing around with the AL dot com people and you know other kinds of. Uh, different media groups and everyone I've interacted with, especially yourself, it's just a high character and just, you know, fun to talk to and be around. So it's definitely something that I would, you know, after my college football career is over, I'll definitely consider doing. Well, you're kind of a natural. All right, real quickly, uh, what did it feel like uh, at, at Jordan-Hare Stadium to have your guts ripped out in the Iron Bowl like that and walk off the field knowing you're not going to go to the playoff uh, and to lose the way that you did? Uh, what What's that feeling like for an Alabama football player? Gosh, um, it's it's not it's not a good feeling. I'll tell you that. Um, the there was very few losses uh, in my time in Alabama, and although I might not have been on the field as much, I felt like I contributed to every single one of them um, throughout the week, and just being there and cheering the team on. And you know, it it feels like your heart's ripped out. You really don't know. You're, you're sitting there and you're you're thinking like, what just happened? Um, you know, all that adrenaline, all the work ethic, all, you know, all your, you've seen all these guys put in so much work as well, and no one wants to lose. Um, and just a series of events happen, and, you know, some things you can't control, some things you can't. And, you know, after the game, it just realized, like, dang, this is this sucks, but time to get back to work. Uh, so, you know, Saban's not going to let us sit there and, 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 you know, complain about it or get upset about it too long. We're just back to work. So immediately it was it was pretty bad feeling, but uh, you know when we get back to work it it goes away and we're just focused on the next thing. All right, and finally, uh, I mentioned you went to Woodbury Forest, uh, tradition laden school, and we just talked about the Iron Bowl. But in preparing for this interview, I found out that the longest running high school football rivalry in the South is between Woodbury Forest and Episcopal High School of Alexandria, Virginia. And that Woodbury Forest does a bonfire that reaches four stories high. <laughs> and the entire student body lines up to throw torches into a tower of logs. The bonfire draws nearly as many fans as the game itself. Is that true? I've never heard of a bonfire like that. Is that legit? It is It is legit. Uh, it is one of the most wild experiences and, and things that I've been a part of. I mean, it is. you'll see ashes just coming from the sky. Um, you know, and the bonfire is the biggest thing you've ever seen. They have people setting it up and, you know, cranes coming in and putting logs on it. It is an unbelievable thing. And it's, it was an incredible rivalry game too. And, you know, crazy that you brought that up. My senior year, our rivalry game ended in a tie for the first time in like, I don't know how many years, but it was a really bad like ending, uh, and really crazy story. So, it was a tie tie. There was no there was no decision to try to play it off or anything like that. It was a yeah, it was a tie tie. Oh my. Uh, I, I like I don't real I do not know the history of how many, you know, ties there've been in the rivalry, but very few of them and it caused a lot of, you know, just a <laughs> lack of clarity for anybody. I um, bet. And so it was pretty wild. <laughs> 
Oh, you don't know how to feel after a tie. Great stuff, Mac. Listen, man, I, I've, I'm glad we got to catch up. We went way over our time limit, but I was enjoying it so much. And uh, we'll we'll visit again and and keep us up to date with where you decide to uh, to go to school. Final, just 15 or, th- or 30 seconds. Uh, uh, what are you doing to stay in shape during this pandemic? You just working out at home? Yeah, so I'm working out at home. I've, I've found unique ways to just continue to, you know, work on the same set of muscles and, you know, like I tell people, if you really want it bad enough, if you want to get in shape, if you want to work hard, you'll you'll find a way no matter where you are. Uh, so that's what I'm doing, and I really appreciate you having me on the show, and you know, look forward to continuing to talk. All right, it's been a pleasure. Good luck. Thank you, Mac. Thank you so much, Gary. I appreciate you.